All right, all right. I'm on my third attempt making this. Um, it's quite hot in here. Hey guys, I'm gonna be talking about hosting today. Why hosting? Well, because we're going into a more multiplayer aspect of the channel. Uh, we've been doing that recently. It's been going very nicely. So I would like to first thank everybody who have an interest in making multiplayer game. Thank you for leaving likes, leaving comments, and, and interacting with the channel. Numbers are going well. Okay, that aside, why are we doing hosting today? Well, first, because it's on popular demand. Most of you actually left comments down there saying, hey, how do I hosting? Uh, some people join Discord, they ask the same thing. So today I'll be addressing that through a very long talk video. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna try and make it quick. So we have three ways to connect, usually when we make a game. Um, and when, when I mean connect, Whenever you make your game um, through MLAPI or the common transport layer, you always have to connect to a specific endpoint as a client. And this video is going to be covering the three different ways that you can connect. The first one is going to be locally. This one you most likely are familiar with. The second one is through LAN. And the third one is going to be through external IP, which is the one that you're here for most likely. <laughs> as always, I would like to remind everybody that if you're interested in a specific part of the video, just like all my videos, we have chapters, so if you want to jump straight ahead to the external IP, just, just click down there. Uh, but I do recommend that you watch the two other ones, why not? Because they're short and it gives me a little bit of watch time. <laughs> okay, so let's begin. Alright, so our first one is the local hosting. Local hosting basically means that only people from your computer can connect. And you know, that, that's one device, that's one computer. Which is very good for testing because as you saw during the chess game or during the Ludo game, I'm just booting multiple um, instances of the game. So for example, I'm booting four times the, the game and then I just connect locally and I can play with four players. But those four players are controlled by me on a single computer. So local hosting is, is basically that. When you want to connect locally, you have to point towards localhost or the loopback address, which is 127.0.0.1. They're all the same thing, basically. So it's either called uh, localhost 127.0.0.1 or the loopback address. All right. One of the advantage of um, doing that locally is that you don't have to create any exception for the firewall and you don't have to forward any port. So you don't have to unlock a specific thing on your router that says, hey, you can go through here to communicate with my game. Um, which is why we use it in production, not sorry, not project, in development. So while we're making the game, we usually run things locally and we can test things out. We can interact with the server, even though the server is on our machine, we can still do things like that. And it, it's very quick. We don't have to deploy. Um, yeah. And when, whenever we're ready, when the game is ready, we can go from local hosting to external hosting and then publish that out there for anybody to play. All right, our second one is LAN hosting. And LAN hosting is basically hosting on your router. It's, you're not hosting on your router, but I'm just saying you're exposing your game to everybody on your router. So that would mean your sister, your brother, anybody who's living with you, or if you're at the workplace, anybody who's connected to the same, well, basically it's a network, right? So everybody who's connected to the same local area network, which also means that you could go off the grid completely with your company, right? You could go outside in the jungle and as long as you have a router, you guys can play on the product that you're developing. You don't have to be connected to the internet. All you need to do is to be connected to each other through a router. Um, yeah. One of the caveat, however, is that the person who is hosting, so for example, if I'm hosting on my computer over there and I have my laptop here, I have to make sure that my computer over there has some uh, firewall exception in some of the cases. Because I'm using Windows 10, I do need to have a firewall uh, exception for my game. Now, there is also some cases where the router you're using, depending on your router manufacturer, uh, you might also have to forward the port for, for this to happen, the connection inside of the router. So when you want to connect to another computer on your LAN, you have to be using what is called um, the internal IP address. And an internal IP address is not an IP address that you're using when you visit Google, for example. That would be your external IP. The, um, the IP address I'm talking about is the one that your router assigns to every single machine in your place. So, for example, if you leave your router on default, you might have um, my, my first device was connected, for example, my computer. I don't know if that's the case. So don't. <laughs> but like the first device that is connected would be something like 
point one. Um, and then my phone would be connected and then I would be 0 0.0.0.0.2. 0 .0 okay, I'm getting that wrong, but basically the increment would be one at the time. So if a new machine comes in, that would be number three. Now, in most cases for North American router, uh, this would begin with 192, 168.0 point something. And if you want to know which one uh, is your host, you have to go on your hosting machine and, for example, go inside of the command line and type in ipconfig. From that point, you are going to be able to have a look at which one is the internal IP address. And that's pretty much it for LAN hosting. Um, I'll be frank, the last time I played a LAN game, it was probably 20 years ago with Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun. Yeah, so it's been a while um, and therefore we don't really use that technique anymore. And uh, if you go on Steam, you can't, well, you, I guess you could download a Steam game that allows you to do that. Um, the point is that's not the popular option. The popular option is the following. Where to begin? Um, there are so many things that we have to talk about here. Um, efficiency, we have to talk about which operating system are we going to be using. We have to talk about where are we going to be hosting this? Should we host it locally here or should we use service like Amazon? Um, let's get into it. I believe for that we're going to have to go on the computer eventually, but at the moment I just want to discuss which approach I'm going to be using in this video and how we're going to move further after that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the machine just after this. So for this video, I'm going to be showing you how to host on the Windows machine and how to forward your port to some extent because I can't, I can't exactly show you how to forward your port. It's different based on every router's manufacturer and also uh, show you the Windows firewall exception. So as I said, Windows machine hosting today at your place. The test we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our laptop. I'm going to sign him off our Wi-Fi. I'm going to put him on my phone um, LTE, so on my phone satellite connection, and I'm going to try to connect using the laptop. So that's that's how I know things are going to work, basically. <laughs> if that test goes through, then uh, it would mean that we would be ready to actually redo the same exact configuration we're going to do on this machine on a Windows machine somewhere else. So for example, if you want to host in your cabinet, you can, you can actually have a Windows machine that stays there with the same setting that we've done, run the server, and that would be good, right? That would be your machine right there. Um, though to be frank, that's not where I want to add in the future. In the future, I want this to be hosted on DigitalOcean with the Linux machine, uh, which is what we're gonna be covering in the next video. But today, let's do Windows. When you understand Windows, we can easily do Linux, assuming that you have a little bit of knowledge with Linux, else not gonna be a problem because we can just uh, walk you through the command real quick. So. Let's jump on the computer. Let's have a look at local hosting. Hey, I'm back. Let's have a look at how we implement um, local hosting, which is the simplest one. It's when you host from your own computer to your own computer. So going inside of my code, and the reason I want to do that real quick is so um, the same flow applies for every single type of connection. So in all cases, you need to know how to do that, right? So having a look here at my server.cs or any type of method you're going to be using in this code over here, this is the chess game, by the way. So in the chess game, we're using the com.networking, actually com.unity.transport, which means that whenever we connect, we connect this way. We connect by creating a driver and then we listen on it. That's for the server, of course. Now on the server, we take a specific port and then we just listen. Now on the client side, we actually get a specific IP and also the same port as uh, we're using for the server. So if you haven't guessed it already, here is the endpoint. And what we have to do is when we're sending the IP address, when we want to connect locally, we want to connect to either localhost or the 127.0.0.1. So this is for local hosting only. And we can test this out by having two instances of the same game, like so. And one of them can be hosting. And when we host, we're going to get this prompt over here that's going to ask, um, it's going to ask us, Windows is going to ask us, are we allowing this to use a public network, private network? Are we allowing this application to receive and send connection? Uh, very important if you plan on actually putting that live through external IP or through LAN even that you allow this. In our case, I'm going to do a test and I'm just going to decline that. So just say cancel, see if it works. So if I try to connect locally, I know uh, that's not local game, right? We want to connect to 127.0.0.1. Um, it still works. So we don't need that firewall exception. It's on the same computer. 
we're not going outside the router, therefore this will work. And as you can see, the rest also works. And that's all there is to local hosting. As I've mentioned, this is only used during um, development. And once we're ready to put it to production, we either go through LAN or external IP or external IP outside of our computer. We have a bunch of options. Let's keep going. All right, so now our second method is going to involve another computer. So right here, I have a laptop that is connected to the same exact router as my computer. So what we'll be doing right now is getting a little bit of things set up for the host computer. Um, as you saw earlier, we got a prompt asking us if we allow um, traffic going through this application. We said no. So in that case, we're kind of blocked going further. What we can do is head over to the Windows firewall settings, go under allow an app or feature to the defender, change the settings, and then find the application here. In this case, it was the chess YouTube. I'm going to actually remove it so I get the prompt again. Uh, or you can just basically just stick it. I guess that could also work. And then from that point on, if I just go in there just to get the setup done, um, click on the hosting, accept, and I allow access to public network and also private one. Well, I didn't allow private one, but I'm currently on what is considered to be a public network. That being said, we are now ready to connect our other machine to this. Um, the cool thing about this one is that we don't need any port forwarding. So we don't have to go up to the router and say, can you unlock port? Uh, I believe in that case it was 8007 for the chess game. Yeah, so right here, 8007. We don't need to do that because we stay on the same LAN. We stay on the same router. Um, and then UDP punch through, I believe, is, is working here. So it's punching a hole in between the two clients and they, they can talk like peer to peer without going to the server. Um, I think that was happening. Somebody might correct me on that. But either way, they communicate without needing the, um, the forwarding of a port. So once you're ready, once you have the, um, the Windows firewall allocated, go ahead, boot the application. And then we're going to click on hosting. And we're going to need to know what is the IP of the hosting machine. So what we can do is that on the command line, so in your window here, you can type in CMD, boot this up, and type in IP config. The one you're looking for is the IPv4 address. And as I've mentioned in the, um, in the first section of the video, if you're in North America, it's most likely going to start with 192, 168 dot, and then a certain number. All right, so at this point, the hosting computer is pretty much ready. What you need to do next is build up the game, um, zip it, send it to another computer somehow. I use Drive in my case, but you can send it through USB or, or any delivery method that you wish. And once it is done, you can finally open it up on your other computer. So this other computer right here is connected to the same router. I just want to mention that again. And if I go under the online game section, yes, I know about this thing, thank you. Um, I can now type in the IPv4 address that I have right there and it should work. So in this case, 192.168.0 and then 10, and I'm gonna hit connect. Oops. And as you can see, this is moving. On the other side, it's also moving. I can do some moves. And now the game is being played in the local area network, which means that we don't even need to go to the internet. We don't even need to have internet. We just needed to have a router. And this is being playable on multiple machines. The final section for today is the external IP hosting on the Windows machine. And we need to do the exact same thing we've done earlier for the LAN hosting, which means we need to allow the firewall to um, we need to tell the firewall to allow communication in between this application and you know whatever port that we're asking. So in this case, we did make sure to have the firewall exception. If you don't remember, it's right here under the Windows firewall, you allow an application. So in this case, the chess YT. So that's done, that's perfect. The second thing we need at this point is to forward a port. We need to allow that on the router level. So now our computer is ready to have communication from outside. However, our router is still blocking it. So we have to make sure we First, find what is the IP of a router. So going back to what we had earlier, if we go under IP config, you should also be able to find the default gateway. With that IP address right there, you can open up a browser and actually open it up. And now depending on your manufacturer, you're gonna to need to log in the, the router. So if you don't know what the credentials are of your router, uh, most likely you can find them online. Maybe you have a default account with a default password. You can Google what is the name of your router and you can get that. Uh, in my case, obviously I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and log that in. And then once again, depending on the manufacturer of your router, 
you might be able to find a section, actually you will be able to find a section that has the port forwarding in there. And you can go here, add a new rule, and that rule will be, for example, this is for the chess, YouTube. We are on the UDP protocol only. And for this game, I believe it was 8007 I used. So I'm gonna use 8007, like so. And the local address, oh, sorry. And the local address has to be the, the, um, the address of the computer that is hosting this on the local IP address. So earlier when we connected to our LAN game, that was the IP of the host. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. That is my, um, my internal IP address for this computer. This is the one hosting. And I'm going to allow that. And I'm going to allow all of that. So let's hit apply. At this point, my port should be forward. And now I have two ports open on my computer, one for the multiplayer survival game, which I'm going to change after that, and also one for the chess YouTube, which I'm going to delete after that. So that being said, um, the computer right now is ready to receive connection from outside. And now the next step is to go over to Google and type in what is my IP address. You're going to be able to find your external IP address or your public IP address. You're going to remember that because that's what you're going to have to fill in on the other computer, so on uh, my laptop in this case. And now the third and final step would be to start hosting. So I'm going to go ahead, start this, host a new game, and just leave it there for a moment as I prepare the laptop. So I'm going to quickly go over what I've just done right now. So I prepared some sort of setup over here, and the setup is the following. Um, I went ahead and I booted up my phone. My phone has LT, so it has data. I made sure to enable the hotspot, and then I connected this computer to my hotspot. So technically, they're not on the same. This is the same as if you had a friend somewhere, I just don't have friends, if you have a friend somewhere that, that plays your game on a um, different router. So I'm going to go ahead now, as I'm connected to the internet, however, on a different network, type in the address, the public IP address that I saw earlier. So over here, and click on connect. And there we go. So we're now connected to the internet through external IP. So it's as simple as that, actually. It doesn't need to be any more complex. And now when we talk about dedicated hosting, it's the exact same thing. If you plan on having a dedicated Windows host, this is the exact same setup as you need to go through. For Linux, it's a little bit easier, actually, but you need to learn how to use Linux, which we will in the next episode of uh, this very specific topic. Um, but yeah. This is a host, of course, uh, it's not a dedicated host, meaning that when I go to sleep the night, and plus this is a chess game, but like if I was hosting my multiplayer survival game, if I go to sleep, my game gets shut down, right? If there's no server, nobody can connect to it uh, because I shut down my computer at night, things like that. But if we had a dedicated host, basically this machine would be running 24 seven, maybe without a screen, maybe Unity would be in batch mode, which we'll do very, very soon. Um, all of these things might be true, but the principle is the same. You open up the port, you open up the firewall, and you let people connect. It's as simple as that. As I've mentioned, the next episode is going to be about hosting this somewhere else than on my personal computer. So we're going to put that on a Linux machine, so on a Ubuntu most likely, and we're going to put that online on DigitalOcean, I believe. So stick around for that. It's going to be quite fun and quite useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.